All right, so today's plan is to take this outboarder motor and making it electric with that massive electric motor that I have. And the plan is to take a toroidal propeller and 3D print it and see how effective we can get this system. So let's get started. And all my tools have rust on them. So I can't even open the plier. And yes, this engine was not working, so... So I'm really saving the planet by reusing this piece of shit. Okay, here's what we ended up with. I removed everything. The entire engine compartment is just empty. It's a shaft going down to the propeller. And that gave me a lot of confidence that this is gonna work because I was a bit worried about the... I was a bit worried about the reduction for this electric motor. Maybe this wouldn't be strong enough to turn this propeller quickly. Now, what I found out was that when I spin the shaft inside the engine compartment, the propeller doesn't turn with it. It takes two revolutions up here to turn the propeller once. So it's a two to one ratio. I think that's gonna fit this motor perfectly. Now this electric motor, I will be running at 48 volts. I salvaged this motor from the snow racer that we've been working on the past couple of months. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. It's The motor will be attached like this, but we need an adapter, an adapter going from this shaft to this shaft. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, I got some paper because the entire engine compartment is filled with grease. So I'll try to get that out and then we can paint it. Okay, so right now I'm working on the mount and I'm using these extrusions that I've been using a lot before. So in the future, I wanna connect this to a homemade boat that we're gonna make in part two, hopefully. And the plan there is to connect a steering wheel to it. So it will have to be something similar to what we did with the electric stand-up pedal board. And that's when I use this piece. It's just a 3D printed mount that allows it to move left and right. I just don't know if it's gonna be strong enough for the massive motor, but I guess that's just gonna have to be a surprise. No, this won't be the final adapter, but this is the 3D printed version that I made just to make sure that it works before I get the one in stainless steel. And that's gonna be a lot tougher and it fits very nicely on the motor. Okay, so what's left is to 3D print some kind of standoff that allows us to use a threaded rod to go all the way through and so we can bolt it on the housing and on the top of the motor so that it holds it in place. And I'm gonna do that for all four points on the motor. I like the fact that even with the motor, it weighs about half of what it did before and it should have about as much power. That's gonna be insane. I, I think I've changed, I've definitely changed the entire idea of how to mount this motor. First of all, I have these aluminum extrusions. I drilled some holes so we can mount this entire thing with aluminum extrusions. They work very well. But this motor, I don't think it's gonna work to have a threaded rod like this. It's just not gonna match up on all four mounting holes. It worked out on this, but on all the other ones, there are so many odd extrusions coming up from the housing that it's very difficult to pinpoint where to drill the holes. Now, what I think I'll do instead, and I do this all the time just because it's so powerful, is snap a photo above the motor and now import that photo into our CAD software and make a mount that joins the sides of this housing, metal housing, because this is very strong. I think that's strong enough so we can join a 3D printed piece that then goes up and is a U-shaped holder for the motor. I think that's gonna be easier. And with that photo, I think we're gonna make it. So time to do some CADing. 
Okay, I was originally thinking of using threaded rods to hold the motor in place. I don't think that's a good idea considering how tall it is. I'm not sure it would be able to support the twisting motion. Though. So what I did instead was I 3D printed, well first of all the adapter for the shaft and that works very well but that's going to be metal. I also 3D printed very solid mounts for the motor and I've already pre-drilled side holes so the motor just clicks into place onto the shaft there you go and then i'll use threaded rods to support the sides like that then what i will do which is kind of sketchy is to heat up this portion of the plastic very carefully because the sides don't match up i'll heat it up and carefully bolt them together squeeze them together while the plastic is malleable The nut is going into the plastic, so maybe a washer could help. Okay, worked pretty well, not perfect. All right, so now with the motor in place, I'm gonna get started on the steering, and that's gonna be this chunk of plastic mounted on another piece of plastic. And that's gonna be the steering with a bolt going through this assembly, and it's gonna be moving left and right by wires we're gonna connect to these arms all right so let's get this part bolted on here all right so how do you power a motor of that magnitude with two of these batteries we're gonna put them in series and make a 50 volt battery and that's gonna go into this controller and I have an extension cable that lets us make a series connection but now on the opposite end this going to the battery and this going to the motor I'm using these lug nuts I've tried a bunch of other connectors they always get hot and these just won't and here is the motor spinning up for the very first time Oh my god, this is a bad idea, I really should make it. Then I could finally test it in the water. Alright, the 3D printed part, that's flexing quite a bit. I'm gonna have to reprint that, but honestly, everything else seems to be holding up great. No problem, no issue whatsoever. It's just a whole lot of plastic. Come on, it can't go wrong. We're running this on 48 volts, that's two of these batteries. I have a third one, so we could do 72 volts. That would just add a ton more power. Not in this video, maybe in the boat video that's coming up next. I 3D printed a steering arm, which now in hindsight was a terrible idea. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. The new adapter turned out great and it's very valuable having a company that can do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding accessible to you. That way I was able to use their online manufacturing service where you can choose exactly how and in what material you would like your part to be made out of. Because the part would be in close proximity to water, it was probably a good idea to check the stainless steel box to fight against rust. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCBs, so go ahead and try it at PCBWay.com. The adapter joining the motor and the shaft is uh, plastic, it's uh, 3D printed. So I asked PCBWay if they could make one out of metal, and here it is. It's uh, stainless steel, and it looks fabulous. So that's gonna have to be changed, but I also 3D printed a new version of this part, which is way stronger. And here is the toroidal propeller that I 3D printed, just removing some supports. It feels very solid, but it's kind of rough, so I'm gonna have to take some sandpaper and make it all smooth, and probably spray paint it in some kind of protective spray. Uh. 
but day two of testing didn't go as planned. Oh, f this would be so easy if I were. Well, there's room for improvement. Clearly there was a lot of cavitation and at this point it was most likely because the motor was mounted too high. Well, the Achilles heel of this setup and the reason I couldn't go more than 40% throttle was this part here. I thought it was gonna break for sure and that just gotta be metal. We also need water cooling for the speed controller. Everything else worked pretty well. The steering was okay, we gotta redo a couple of things. That's gonna have to be in part two where we also gonna start to build the boat. This is the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you again in part two. All right, just a quick announcement before you go. I finally bought a house with a garage with my girlfriend and... So I don't have to be in this tiny shed, which feels great. So let me know what you would like to see in the new garage. Okay, that's it. Bye.